the value of Pokemon cards has certainly appreciated over time. It's crazy to think that the same cards that my friends and I were trading with each other over 20 years ago on the school bus are now worth hundreds, while some are worth even thousands of dollars. In this episode, I'm going to go over several different types of Pokemon cards and will also cover how rare each of these actually are. Then I'll show you how you can check for their prices online to see how much your cards may be worth today. So first of all, we'll go over the base set. And when we say base set, we are referring to the first expansion of Pokemon cards that featured generation one Pokemon in the card game. It's super important to understand the three different types of rarity for base sets which were released in this order. First edition, shadowless, and unlimited or shadowed. These three types of cards are going to be valued according to two things. First, their release date. So the earlier they were printed along with the first set of printing, the more rare they are. And number two, their availability. So the higher the number of people there are out there that own a card, the less rare it would be. So now that we know what we mean by three types of base sets, let's go over how this stuff works. First, the base set of the first edition shadowless markings was released. You can consider this as the most rarest of its kind because these cards were released in the first set of printing. Then the second printing was released which was just pure shadowless. In other words, the first edition marking was removed but the art box still remained shadowless. So this would be the next one up in terms of rarity and value and would be the second most rarest type of card. Last but not least, the unlimited edition came out which was more common and had a drop shadow underneath the art box. And here is where I draw the line for people thinking I have a holographic card from the base set and therefore this card is going to be worth hundreds of dollars. Not necessarily the case because if that card has a drop shadow it's likely not going to be worth as much as you think. So if you're lucky, you'll find cards that are marked with first edition and are shadowless, meaning they were part of the first printing or base set of the trading card game's life cycle. But generally, if you're going through your collection of Pokemon cards to see if you have anything that's worth a lot of value, it's a huge win if any one of your cards qualify for either one of the two above. Now we're talking about a whole different classification of cards and how rare they are. Misprints and error cards are those that have certain content on the card that is incorrect. So in other words, these were mistakes that should not have been printed on the card originally. Here is where misprints get a little complicated. The original Vulpix cards in the base set were for some reason printed with HP 50 instead of 50 HP. This was not corrected until 1999, but believe it or not, the Vulpix cards that were actually corrected are worth a lot more in value. So yes, there is a big flip side to all this. Promo cards are a different set of cards because these were not sold in stores but rather they were given away as special gifts. So for example, you may have gotten it at a theater while purchasing a ticket to go see a Pokemon movie or maybe through buying different merchandise that's relevant to the franchise as part of a limited edition set. And believe it or not, the Japanese illustrator Pikachu was a promo card that sold for over $200,000 as part of an auction. That's crazy. So now that you know how Pokemon cards are valued, you probably just want to know how much they're worth. I personally recommend three different sites that you can use to get a market price down for any card that you may own. TCG Player is a great site that's been used for just about any trading card game where Pokemon is one of the most popular franchises out there. You can just start searching for cards as soon as you land on the site. Here I searched for Charizard and as you can see the shadowless one from the base set has a market price nearly 10 times the price of the one from base set 2. Troll and Toad is another major site that's used for trading cards and selling online. Once you land on this site, you can filter the search by Pokemon and find what you're looking to get a value of. And eBay is a third option I would suggest if you're looking to get a market price or for selling cards. And so all three of these sites are widely used and unfortunately there is no perfect option. But I would highly suggest using all three so you can narrow down and determine the right price for the cards you own. Last but not least, for those of you that are looking to buy cards instead, make sure you pay close attention to sell 
seller reviews before you purchase anything so you know what you're up against. So I hope this video helped you understand how Pokemon cards are valued and how much some of yours may be worth. But if you happen to stumble upon some Pokemon cards that you had lying around, keep in mind that the value of these commodities tends to go up and down from time to time. My personal suggestion is to keep holding on to them but also keep an eye on online trends like this one because you never know when something will end up becoming potentially super rare out of nowhere. Thanks for watching and for more on Pokemon cards please consider subscribing to this channel.